Hey there, Tammy C. Walker coming at you with another great video. Today I want to take a quote from who else? Kobe Bryant. And I was going through the internet looking at his different quotes. I may be inspired for the rest of the year. I knew how tenacious he was. I knew how talented he was, how he just had that crazy, mad push to win, the desire. But these quotes, they just motivate me. So let me give you one that's going to be the thesis of this video. If you don't believe in yourself, no one will do it for you. Can't get no better than that. I know with Kobe, people would say he was arrogant. No, baby. That's called confidence. Sometimes when people are not goofballs, even when they're young and they're very focused and serious, people consider that arrogance or stuck up is confidence. And that's what he was. So stay tuned and we will dive in deeper into believing in yourself. Let's go. Find something you cannot afford to pay for. Tap into it. Hey there, welcome back. I am back to continue talking about believing in yourself. This is one of Kobe Bryant's many quotes. And who else can help us but a five-time NBA champion that never gave up? So I'm just pulling from his quotes and, you know, celebrating his life and using his passing as motivation. I hope something that I say in this video will help you. That's what my channel is all about. So before I get started, if you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe. Please hit like. It's very important to hit the like button. I notice people are viewing, but they're forgetting to hit like. So if you can remember to hit like, that'll help me, you know, get more subscribers as well as get more views and get the word out about believing in yourself and other great and positive things. I create these videos from the bottom of my heart and I create them to give people hope. As a therapist, as a social worker, period, I just talk to a lot of people and they feel downtrodden, they feel defeated, and it's just um, important that those of us that have been through something that are positive, motivating, that can uplift someone else it's important to do these videos it's important to do motivational speaking getting on a phone call and just motivating someone or encouraging them sometimes just being a listening ear does wonders i hope and pray that you know beating cancer twice and surviving an abusive marriage and many other things that i know some of you all have gone through as well i hope that those things can help inspire you because it's not what happens to us, but it's how we respond to it that will tell the test of time. Okay, so before I get started on other things, I did want to read something from Yana Von Zant's book. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been going through Acts of Faith. It's a daily book that um, breaks down each day of the week, 365 days, and it gives beautiful quotes. But I'm taking this from her introduction. This lady, she killed this. Talking about these people who talk about things but never do it. There are other people who skip through life almost did. I almost had this. I almost did that. These are usually the same people who almost didn't do something, but now are just about to do something else. I know you all know these people. Looking at them and the situations, many of them wrestle with. You pray that they do something, anything, to move themselves to a new direction. What you may understand, excuse me, what you may not understand or recognize is that there is a secret thrill and excitement that goes with just about to do and almost did that keeps people stuck in the warped fear and faithlessness. There is no amount of likes or follows that can convince them that they or their life can be different. They are content to talk about 
than rather be about something different. Change takes place in the moment and when you have faith. Any moment can be the moment that change happens for you. Without faith, you will live a scary life and be in a scary place. For clarity's sake, let's call this place on the edge. I know you all can relate to this. I know people like this. This has been me in the past. The edge is the place you live in when you almost do what you need to do, but don't follow through for one reason or another. The edge is where you live when you hope, wish, and try, but never seem able to get anything done. The edge is where you live when you view yourself as a victim of circumstances. Hello, everybody out there of your life with no real clue about how you are creating our experiences. My, my, my. It is also on the edge where you can develop the faith you need to do what is required to abandon the edge forever. Now, I really do know how to read you all. I wear readers, and I'm trying to be cute on this video, so that's why I'm stumbling over my words, because I can hardly see, but I do know how to read. But that was powerful. Who can you think of that is a almost person? I almost went back to school. I almost took a trip to Paris or Jamaica. I almost bought my own house. I almost got married. I almost went on a date. I almost lost some weight. I almost learned how to swim. I almost took that Zumba class. I almost tried to learn a new sport. Almost. It doesn't count. Didn't Brandy sing about that? It doesn't count. So the people that live on the edge really are not living at all. They're living in fear. And it's like they're a prisoner in their own fear, in their own mind. And as a life coach, this is when I just want to run out the room when I'm talking to somebody or just, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I help them, give them some suggestions. And before I can get the last word out of my mouth, they throw me an excuse. Well, have you tried this? Well, I will, but I don't have money. Have you tried this? Well, I feel like I'm too old. Have you tried this? Well, I could be too young. When people make excuses, they are not ready. The almost people, they are not ready. They're living on the edge, making up excuses, and becoming a victim of their own circumstances. Here in the United States of America, I know you have libraries near you. I have so many by me, I don't know what to do. Anything I want to do, I just use my 10 fingers and get to type it away on Google. I opened up my own life coaching business by going on Google. I learned how to get my permit, how to put my ad in the paper for my business, how to set up my own website, how to, of course, order business cards. I even took a course online to become a life coach. This was, oh my God, 10 years ago now, 2010. And even with going back to school, da -da -da -da, type, 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 compare schools and pick the one that fit my needs, you know, that gave me the degree that I wanted in social work that was close to my home that was affordable, which really wasn't affordable, but <laughs> it was the best choice for me at that time. So don't be an almost person. Don't live on the edge about to take the Zoom class, about to uh, may redo my resume. I'm about to go to Paris. I might go on this um, blind date. Be the doer. Be the doer. And again, what Kobe said, if you don't believe in yourself, <laughs> no one would do it for you. You can go on an interview, but if you slump down in your seat, or stuttering over your words, those people are going to pass you by. They are not going to invite you back in for a second interview, and you will not get hired. You have to believe in yourself. When you're on a date, you don't have to tell a guy, I have my own house, and I'm so this, and I'm so that. Just embody who you are. Sit tall, stand tall, and look beautiful. And be modest, you know, you don't have to sell yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody's else, nobody else is going to believe in you anyway, and they can tell when you're overdoing things. So 
relax, as um, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale says in his book, The Power of Positive Thinking. Relax for easy power and believe in yourself. And try not to be one of those almost people, living on the edge but not actually living. So I want to give you four tips that could help you to believe in yourself, stop being the almost person, and stop living on the edge. Because again, living on the edge is not living. Tip number one, I want you to take a chance on you. And I know Jimmy Butler been getting a lot of flack because, and I, and I don't really mean to use this channel to bash people, but I just kind of, I'm one of those type of people that call it like I see it. I call it space to space. I follow Jimmy Butler from the beginning. And I heard of his story of him being homeless. He got put out when he was 13. Anyway, he got... Um, taken in by a friend and the friend's mom raised him, pushed him to uh, Marquette and then he went on to, of course, the Chicago Bulls. Jimmy was always a good player for us. Very physical. Um, I don't know if he's the fastest guy, but he, he had grit. He has grit, tenacity. Always out hustled another player and that's what I loved about him. And before he got that big contract and that big head and that big ego, such a big ego. Um, anyway, <laughs> he was humble and he wasn't making that much money, but people were panicking like they, like everybody does. They panic over the weather. They panic over the state of our um, president, whatever. Everybody's in a panic and they were panicking for Jimmy. What are you going to do? You have this small contract. Are you going to be a free agent? What are you going to do? And he's like, I'm not worried. I'm going to bet on myself. So he just sat back. He waited till the last minute. The Bulls offered him a $90 million contract. And I think Jimmy was making, sorry if I'm misquoting, I'm going to say $1 million, $2 million, if that. He wasn't making any money. He went from that to $90 million because he bet on himself. Take a chance on you because that's the only way you're kind of going to see results. You have to believe in yourself. It, all, it goes right back to what Kobe was saying. Tip number two, hold your head up and be proud. Don't be grumbling. I ain't gonna never make it. Man, you so lucky. Oh boy, yo, lucky you. Hey, lucky you too. And it starts with believing in yourself. And one thing I loved about my late father, Otis Tyrone Walker, from Mobile, Alabama. You know, my dad grew up in the 30s. Nothing but racism. And just, you know, it was tough. It was, we can't even relate. But my dad was a proud man. He was proud to own his own home. He kept his grass well manicured. He was an electrician for a railroad, for Burlington Northern Railroad for 30 years. My dad was a phenomenal cook and a great dad. He made sure our house ran like a fine oil machine, but he, it, we were very disciplined, okay? He kept us in order. We got in the house at a, a decent time. We went to bed at a decent time. We did our homework. That man, I have to, I just take my hat off to my parents. They really made me the woman that I am, and I would not be even doing this video if I hadn't had those type of parents to instill value and work ethic, work ethic, and to be disciplinarian. So hats off to my dad. So I want us all to take a page from Otis Walker by holding your head up and being proud. Be proud of your heritage, no matter what your background is, African American, Black, whatever you want to call it, Latina, Latino, um, Asian, of course, white. It doesn't matter. It does, I need to say of course like that, but it doesn't matter your race, whoever you are, or wherever you come from, be proud and hold your head up high. People can tell when you're out in public and if you're all slumped down or feeling bad about yourself, no, 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 hold your head up high. I don't care what your circumstances is. When you hold your head up high, you're gonna notice that your problems are going to go down and your faith will go up. So that's important. Tip number three, do not ever, ever, ever compare yourself with somebody else or watch somebody else. Look at them. They sure lucky. Look at them. Why everybody else doing better than me? What am I doing wrong? Looking at them. That's what you're doing wrong. This is how I go through life. 
I don't see girlfriend on the right. I don't see boyfriend on the left because I'm too busy looking in the mirror. I'm too busy focusing on my goals. I'm writing down goals over and over. Over and same old goals over and over. I'm not on Facebook thinking somebody has outworked me because they're on a vacation. They look better than me. She thinks she this. He think he that. I'm so focused on my shit <laughs> that I don't even see other people. And that's the gospel truth. Because there's no way that I can get to work Monday to Friday and be an HR advisor, leave work on Wednesdays, go talk to two clients that are depressed or have anxiety, do another one on Thursday, do some on Saturday and Sunday. All my weeks are not like that, but some are. I have to be on point. And I don't have time to look at you and you and you and you. I have to look at me and stay focused. So I want you to embody your own self. Stop being on social media, except for my YouTube channel. <laughs> Stop being on social media if it's going to throw you off. I don't want you looking at other people. I want you to focus on you. Don't compare, don't compete. Embody your own life. And that's what's going to change your life. Last but not least is, doo -doo -doo -doo, you gotta take a big risk. You gotta take a big risk. It kinda goes back to one, taking a chance on yourself. But you have to take a big risk. And a lot of times I think what stops people they think too much. I know if I get an urge or a surge like comes over me, man, I should go ahead and register for those swimming lessons. I just jump on the computer and get paid for it. Because if I think if I think too long, I'm gonna think wrong and I'm gonna go wrong. So I just go ahead and, and pay for it. And I say, you know, I'm in the water learning to swim, which I'm ready to do again in a couple of weeks. So um, I want you to take a risk. And that risk could be Start looking at some schools you want to go to. You know, if that's what you want to do, even if it's in 2021, start studying the schools now. Pick your school. A new job. Get online. Find out the 2020 style of the resumes. Get you a fresh resume out there and get you some more money. Many times when we leave our job, that's when we get a big raise. So look into that. Hey, you want to get out and date? Look at some things that's coming up this spring. Maybe you could start mingling at some single events. You know, a lot of times as women, the way we get stuck in this bubble of not dating, we're not getting out. We go to work, we go home, we go to our parents' house if they're still with us, our friends' house. We go to the grocery store. Some of us go to the gym. Some of us don't. We go to church. We go home. You're not going to meet anyone this way. Get out. Let people know you're single, mingle, volunteer, singles events, sports. Men love sports. So we have to do our part. Don't say there's not any good men out here. Don't say it's not any good women out here. Do your part. Do your part. So I hope my ranting and my fussing and my tips helped you. I really try hard to um, provide some good content and I'm hoping something I say will motivate you. It's a new year. It's the beginning of the year. It's been a lot going on. It's on, I mean, January is on its way out. It's been a little bit of a rough year, you know, and I don't want to make it all about losing Kobe because other people are passing away. And that is some of what it is. People have been passing away, you know, at the top of this year. And Kobe was just a big tragic shock for us all. And it just shows us how fragile life is, the fragility of life. Here today, gone today. So think about my tips. Don't be an almoster and don't live on the edge. Live out loud and get out there and do these things that you really deserve and that you really know you want to do. Don't be scared. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. Many of us are scared. I was scared to go back to school at 45. I was like, man, I'm old. I'm starting over. Not that old, but for starting over for school and, you know, accruing all this debt. And it was a little bit alarming, but that was the best thing I ever did, you all. The best thing. I've done a lot of stuff, but that one ranks real high. So, you know, believe in yourself. And remember, remember what Kobe said. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to do it for you. So hit that like for me. Hit subscribe. And... Drop me comments on how you believe in yourself, what you do to have that type of faith and tenacity. And thank you for watching as always. Bye-bye.